Today we're going to talk about 10 players whose careers were tragically cut short. And before you keyboard warriors come and attack me for missing a player, there is a part 2 to this video coming out soon, so make sure to watch that. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Johnny Goudreau was a winger who is the most recent active player to pass away. He and his brother Matt were tragically hit while riding their bikes by an alleged drunk driver. And before we go any further in this video, I just wanted to mention, my thoughts and condolences go out to the Goudreau family. This should never have happened. And I really hope that this will serve as a reminder to anybody that it is never okay to drink and drive. And as a Flames fan, I will never forget the moment you were brought into the NHL and played your first game and scored your first goal on your first shot. The Flames Nation will never forget you. And I know this is late, we haven't been posting as much, but I just wanted to thank you for all the memories and for inspiring all of the youth to go and play hockey like Johnny Goudreau. Johnny Goudreau was born on August 13th, 1993 in Salem, New Jersey. Goudreau gained prominence during his college hockey career at Boston College. His impressive performance in college hockey, including winning the Hobie Baker Award as the top NCAA player in 2014, pretty much set the stage for his transition to the NHL. Again, Johnny was drafted by my Calgary Flames in the fourth round of the 2011 draft, and he made an immediate impact in the league with his dynamic offensive play. During his time with the Calgary Flames, Johnny, despite being on the shorter end, quickly established himself as one of the premier forwards in the NHL. Known for his speed, agility, exceptional puck handling skills, he became a key player for the Flames, earning multiple all-star selections and establishing several franchise records. His creativity on the ice and ability to make plays out of seemingly impossible situations made him a highlight daily player, and he was even the Flames' top producer in goals and points. In 2019, Johnny Goudreau signed a free agent contract with the Columbus Blue Jackets seeking new challenges and opportunities. Unfortunately, have as much success with the Blue Jackets as he had with the Flames. But despite facing some injuries and team struggles, Goudreau became a leader and was probably able to help the rookies adapt to the NHL environment. But no longer does Johnny have a chance at redemption. He was going to play with Sean Monaghan, one of his good friends and old buddies from the Calgary Flames. But again, on August 29th, 2024, Johnny was killed while biking with his brother by a drunk driver the day before his sister's wedding. And I know I already mentioned this accident, I just wanted to mention it again. Because again, I just want to honor Johnny, and I know he absolutely deserves an entire video just dedicated to him. And hopefully we can produce that in the future. But for now, I wanted to reinforce the point again. Do not drink and drive. Now, let's move on to Matisse Kevlenix, another player with a very sad story as well. Matisse Kivalenix was a goaltender who showed great promise in his young hockey career. Born on August 26, 1996 in Riga, Latvia, Kivalenix began playing hockey in his hometown before moving to North America in 2013 to further his development. He found success in the United States Hockey League with the Sioux City Musketeers during the 2016 season where he was named the USHL's Goaltender of the Year and Player of the Year after leading the league with a whopping 1.85 goals against average and a 932 save percentage. His standout performance caught the attention of the Columbus Blue Jackets, who signed him as an undrafted free agent in 2017. Kiflenix began his professional career with the Blue Jackets' AHL affiliate, the Cleveland Monsters, where he spent several seasons honing his skills and gaining valuable experience. His hard work sure paid off when he made the NHL debut for the Blue Jackets on January 19th, 2020 against the New York Rangers and he earned his first NHL win with 31 saves and a 2-1 victory. Though his time in the NHL was brief, he showed poise and potential, earning respect as a promising young goaltender who could develop into a reliable NHL backup or starter in the future. His calm demeanor, athleticism, and strong work ethic were key contributors that set him apart. Initially, Kivlenix represented Latvia, most notably at the 2021 IIHF World Championship, where he played a crucial role. He delivered a standout performance by shutting out Canada in a historic 2-0 win. He was viewed as an important piece of Latvia's national team and a developing asset for the Blue Jackets, contributing to the goaltending depth alongside fellow Latvian Elvis Merzlikens and Jonas Korpisalo. Then, on July 4th, 2021, in a freak accident while attending a 4th of July celebration at the home of the Blue Jackets goaltending coach, Manny Legas, Kivlenix was struck by a mortar-style firework 
and the fire were tilted sideways after being launched and headed straight towards Elvis and his pregnant wife, Alexandra. Reportedly then, Kivlenix made the most important save of his life and got in front of both Elvis and Alexandra and was hit in the chest by the firework. The impact caused severe damage to his heart and lungs and despite immediate efforts to help him, he succumbed to his injuries. The NHL on ESPN posted a heartwarming video called The Last Save, remembering Matisse Kaplanix, that we highly recommend you check out. Yannick Dupre was a left winger whose life was tragically cut short by illness. Born on November 15, 1972 in Montreal, Quebec, Dupre was drafted 50th overall by the Philadelphia Flyers in the 1991 NHL entry draft after showing great potential with Laval. Known for his work ethic, speed, and his two-way play, he became a respected figure both on and off the ice. His leadership qualities and his determination stood out as he transitioned to professional hockey with the Flyers' AHL affiliate, the Hershey Bears. Dupre made his NHL debut with the Flyers during the 1991-92 season. Over the next few years, he appeared in 35 NHL games, contributing mostly in a depth role. While his NHL stats included just a single goal and two assists, his impact was far beyond the score sheet. Dupre was known for his relentless forechecking, responsible defensive play, and his ability to bring energy to every shift. In the AHL, he was a steady performer, and his dedication to improving his game was evident as he worked to earn a permanent spot on the Flyers roster. Unfortunately, Dupre's career was derailed when he was diagnosed with leukemia in 1995. And despite his battle with the illness, he remained committed to the sport and the Flyers organization, embodying the spirit of perseverance and courage. His teammates and coaches were deeply affected by his fight, and Dupre continued to inspire those around him with his positive attitude and determination to recover. But on August 16, 1997, at just 24 years of age, Dupre passed away after a two-year battle with leukemia. His death was a heartbreaking loss for the Flyers organization and the broader hockey community. To honor his memory and character, the Flyers organization created the Yannick Dupre Memorial Award. This award is given annually to the player who best demonstrates good citizenship both on and off the ice. So his legacy lives on through this award, reflecting his kindness, his humility, his unwavering dedication to the game, and to his community. Murray Balfour was a right winger known for his tenacity, scoring ability, and key contributions throughout his NHL career in the late 1950s and early 1960s. Born on August 24, 1936 in Regina, Saskatchewan, Balfour began his professional hockey career with the Regina Pats in the Junior Hockey League before making his NHL debut with the Montreal Canadiens during the 1956-7 season. Though his time with Montreal was brief, Balfour managed to make an impact helping the Canadians win the Stanley Cup in 1958. However, his role was pretty limited and he was traded to the Chicago Blackhawks in 1959, where his career truly took off. With the Blackhawks, Balfour became an integral part of the team's success playing alongside stars like Bobby Hull and Stan Mikita. He was known for his aggressive style of play, which made him a valuable two-way forward. Balfour's most memorable moment came during the 1961 Stanley Cup playoffs, where he played a pivotal role in helping Chicago win its first Stanley Cup in 23 years. His game-winning goal in the semifinals against the Montreal Canadiens sent the Blackhawks to the finals, where they defeated the Red Wings. Balfour's gritty performance and his clutch scoring ability were key to the Blackhawks' championship run. Balfour's career was cut short by health issues. In the early 1960s, he began experiencing severe pain in his chest and shoulder. After extensive medical examinations, it was discovered that he had a malignant tuber in his lung. Despite his diagnosis, Balfour attempted to continue playing, but his condition rapidly deteriorated. He was forced to retire during the 1964-65 season after a brief stint with the Boston Bruins making the end of his NHL career. In total, Balfour played 306 NHL games, recording 67 goals and 90 assists for 157 points. Balfour passed away on May 30th, 1965 at the age of 28 after losing a battle with cancer. Charlie Gardiner was a legendary goaltender who became one of the most iconic figures in early NHL history. Born on December 31, 1904 in Edinburgh, Scotland, Gardiner moved to Canada with his family at a young age and grew up in Winnipeg, Manitoba, where he began playing hockey. 
Gardiner quickly established himself as a top goaltending prospect, playing for various teams in Manitoba before catching the eye of the NHL scouts. Known for his calm demeanor, quick reflexes, and exceptional skill in the net, Gardiner was signed by the Chicago Blackhawks in 1927, marking the beginning of a brilliant but tragically short career. Gardiner made his debut with the Blackhawks during the 1927-28 season and quickly earned a reputation as one of the best goaltenders in the league. Despite playing behind a Chicago team that often struggled offensively, Gardiner's performances were consistently outstanding. He became known for his ability to single-handedly keep his team in games, earning respect and admiration from both teammates and opponents. Gardiner's fearless style of play, which included challenging shooters and playing aggressively outside of the crease if you know what I mean, set him apart as one of the most innovative goaltenders of his time. And you bet that over the course of his career, Gardiner's excellence in the net was recognized with numerous accolades. He won the Vesna, awarded to the NHL's top goaltender twice, first in 1932 and again in 1934. And his most significant achievement came in the 1933-34 season, which he led the Blackhawks to their first ever Stanley Cup win. As team captain, Gardiner was instrumental in the Blackhawks' playoff run, including a shutout in the final game against the Detroit Red Wings that secured the championship. Gardiner remains as one of the few goaltenders in NHL history to captain his team to a Stanley Cup win. Gardiner's life was cut short by a health condition that he had been battling in secret. Throughout much of his career, Gardiner suffered from chronic tonsil infection that led to a condition known as Quincy, an abscess in the tonsils that can cause severe pain and compilations. Despite his deteriorating health, Gardiner continued to play at an elite level, often hiding the extent of his illness from his teammates and coaches. After leading the Blackhawks to the Stanley Cup in 1934, Gardiner's condition was worsened significantly. Just a few weeks after the championship, on June 13, 1934, Charlie Gardiner passed away from a brain hemorrhage caused by the infection. He was only 29 years old. His legacy as one of the greatest goaltenders of his era was cemented by his induction to the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1945. Michel Briere was a center whose potential to become a star in the NHL never came to fruition. Born on October 21st, 1949 in Malartic, Quebec, Briere showed an early promise as a hockey player excelling in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League with the Shawnigan Bruins. His impressive performance in junior hockey, where he was known for his smooth skating, playmaking abilities, and scoring touch, caught the attention of some NHL scouts. In 1969, the Pittsburgh Penguins selected Briere in the third round, 26th overall, and he quickly made an impact in his rookie season. Briere joined the Penguins for the 1969-70 season and immediately became one of the team's most promising young players in his rookie year. He scored 44 points, 12 goals and 32 assists in 76 games, finishing second in team scoring and playing a pivotal role in helping the Penguins reach the playoffs. For the first time in franchise history, Briere's skill, vision on the ice, and calm demeanor under pressure made him a standout among his peers and he was widely regarded as a future star in the league. His performance in the playoffs was particularly impressive as he scored 8 points in 10 games, including 3 game winning goals. Tragically, just as his NHL career was taking off, Briere's life took a devastating turn. On May 15, 1970, shortly after the end of his rookie season, Briere was involved in a serious car accident near the hometown of Malartic, Quebec. He was driving with his fiancée when the car went off the road and crashed into a bridge abutment. Briere suffered severe head injuries in the accident and was left in a coma. Despite undergoing multiple surgeries and spending nearly a year in the hospital, he never regained consciousness. His condition continued to deteriorate and on April 13, 1971, Briere passed away at the age of 21. To honor his memory, the Penguins retired his number 21 jersey, making it the first number to be retired in franchise history. Derek Bougard was a respected enforcer by opponents in the NHL. Born on June 23, 1982 in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Bougard grew up in a hockey-loving family and quickly developed a reputation as a tough, physical player. Standing at 6'7 and weighing over 260 pounds, he was an intimidating figure on the ice. 
Bugard began his junior hockey career in the Western Hockey League with the Regina Pats, Prince George Cougars, and Medicine Hat Tigers. His size and willingness to fight made him a sought-after enforcer, and in 2001, he was drafted by the Minnesota Wild in the seventh round of the NHL Entry Draft. Bugard made his NHL debut with the Minnesota Wild during the 2005-06 season. He quickly became one of the league's most feared enforcers, known for his bone-crushing hits and willingness to drop the gloves with absolutely anyone who challenged him, his role on the team was clear, to protect his teammates and maintain a physical edge. Although he wasn't particularly known for his scoring ability, Bugard's presence on the ice was enough to deter opponents from taking liberties with the Wild Star players. Fans in Minnesota embraced him, and he became a fan favorite for his toughness and loyalty to the team. In 2010, Bugard signed a four-year contract with the New York Rangers where he continued his role as an enforcer. However, his time with the Rangers was marred by injuries, specifically concussions which limited his playing time specifically concussions, which limited his playing time. Despite his declining health, Bugard remained a beloved figure among fans for his willingness to sacrifice his body for the team. Unfortunately, the physical toll of his role as an enforcer began to take a severe toll on his health. The numerous fights and hits he endured over his career led to chronic pain and a reliance of painkillers to manage his injuries. Bugard's life was cut short on May 13, 2011, when he was found dead in his Minneapolis apartment at the age of 28. An autopsy revealed that Bugard had died from an accidental overdose on alcohol and oxycodone, which is a very powerful and deadly painkiller. In the aftermath of his death, it was discovered that Bugard had been suffering from chronic traumatic encephalopathy CTE, a degenerative brain disease linked to repeated head injuries. His death sparked a broader conversation about the risks faced by enforcers in the NHL and the need for better support systems for players dealing with pain and addiction. Dmitry Tertushnai was a defenseman during his brief NHL career with the Philadelphia Flyers. Born on December 26, 1976 in Chilabinsk, Russia, Tertushnai developed his skills in the Russian hockey system and caught the attention of NHL scout with his solid two-way play. The Philadelphia Flyers selected him in the sixth round of the 1995 NHL Draft, seeing promise in his poise, his skating ability, and his hockey sense. After a few more years of development in Russia, he then made the jump to the NHL in the 1998-99 season. Tertishnai's rookie season with the Flyers was impressive as he quickly adapted to the North American style of play. He played 62 games in his debut season, contributing 2 goals and 8 assists for a total of 10 points. His steady play on the blue line, combined with his strong positional awareness and his ability to move the puck, earned him a regular spot in the Flyers lineup. The young defenseman was seen as a promising player who could be essentially a part of the team's future given his calmness under pressure and his growing confidence. Tragically though, Hertischnei's career and life was cut short on July 23, 1999, in a freak boating accident during the offseason. While on a boating trip with two of his Flyers teammates, Francis Lessard and Mikhail Chernov, on Okanagan Lake in BC, Canada, Hertischnei was thrown overboard. As he fell, the boat hit a wave and he was stuck in the net by the boat's propeller. The propeller caused severe injuries including a fatal cut to his jugular vein and he nearly died immediately. Hertischnei's untimely death shocked the Flyers organization and the entire hockey community. At just 22 years old, he had shown the potential to be a key part of the Flyers defense for years to come. And his death, of course, left a profound impact on his teammates, his coaches, his fans who remembered him as a humble, hardworking player with a bright future. The Flyers honored his memory by wearing helmet decals with his initials DT and his loss remains a somber chapter in the team's history. Wayne Mackey was a gritty left winger whose life was also tragically cut short by an illness. Born on November 10th, 1994 in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, Mackey began his professional hockey career in the 1960s after excelling in junior hockey. He played for the St. Catharines Teepees and later on the St. Louis Braves in the minor leagues while his scoring ability and physical style of play earned him attention from the NHL. Mackey made his NHL debut with the Chicago Blackhawks during the 1967 season, but his career 
truly began to take shape after a trade to the St. Louis Blues in 1969. Mackey became known for his aggressive playing style and his ability to contribute offensively. However, his career took a controversial turn in 1969 during a preseason game between the Blues and the Bruins. Mackey was involved in an infamous stick swinging incident with the Bruins defenseman Ted Green, which left Green with a severe head injury. The incident even resulted in criminal charges for both players, but Mackey was acquitted while Green was left with permanent damage. Despite the controversy, Mackey continued to play in the NHL, though the incident would forever be a part of his legacy. In 1970, Mackey was claimed by the Vancouver Canucks in the NHL expansion draft, becoming one of the team's original players. But with the Canucks, Mackey found a home and quickly became a key contributor. He scored the first goal in the Vancouver Canucks history and he went on to have a strong inaugural season with the team. He finished with 63 points, 25 goals and 38 assists in just 78 games. Mackey's combination of his skill, his toughness and his leadership made him a fan favorite in Vancouver where he was expected to be a cornerstone of the franchise for years to come. But then, after showing signs of illness during the 1971 season, Mackey was eventually diagnosed with a malignant brain tumor. And despite undergoing surgery and other treatments, the cancer progressed rapidly. Mackey's condition worsened and he was unable to continue his hockey career. On May 12, 1974, Mackey passed away at 29, leaving behind a legacy of unfulfilled potential and what could have been a stellar career. In his honor, the Canucks unofficially retired his number 11 jersey, choosing to not issue it to any player until Marc Messier was controversially given the number when he joined the team in 1997. Well, there you have it. 10 players whose careers were tragically cut short. Part 2 will be uploaded shortly, so check back to see if we missed anyone. And if you can, make sure to leave a suggestion about what you want to see next, and help us beat the algorithm by smashing that subscribe button, cracking down on that like button, and skating away to the next video on the screen.